Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is the Brutal Truth Buckeye Podcast featuring Angry Scott, who's going to be very fucking angry today, casual fan Chris, who will be a little bit more of a regular diehard fan, and then we got Baby Driver, who's a Georgia fan, fuck that guy, but anyways, look, he's also, he'll give his, uh, you're number one right now in the playoffs, and you know, he'll, he'll, he'll be on the podcast as well, okay? Been waiting for this, boys, just saying, how we doing today? Oh, we are we are doing so. Hey, let me first start off and say, go youths. What, like we were talking about earlier, I, I hope there's not a lot of religious people out there. But uh, Chris and Angry Scott are maybe Mormon this weekend. I think you need to get your bikes out, go uh, pass out some bucks, whatever they do, Just make some good juju, <laughs> man, for that game Friday. We're gonna well, need it. We'll go ahead. Let, let's get started. I'm, this is going to be today's uh, today's podcast is going to be a lot of um, angry ranting between me and Chris. And then, you know, um, Trey will he'll give some two thoughts, which will be a little bit more, you know, unbiased. But anyways, get right into the game. Here's the deal. Um, hey, Chris, before this game, did you know who Trip, uh, who, who Chip uh, Trainum is? Have you ever heard of him? Uh, I might have read about him, uh, some transfer news, but uh, I knew more about him after the game than before. Because I didn't know he was on Ohio State's roster, our oh. quote-unquote main running back that game, the converted linebacker to running back. And that's the first time I saw him, 14 carries for 83 yards. He was Ohio State's bell cow. So that's going to kind of tell us kind of how the game went. So here's the deal. Ohio State comes out. They come out strong. We look like, all right, we're going to go get our revenge. Halftime, we're, we're, we're dominating. I want to say that Michigan had like 10 yards rushing at halftime. Okay? J.J. McCarthy, he is who we thought he was, right? Outside of that one, you know, um, busted play in the first half. Now, notice how I said busted play in the first half. Okay? My Uncle Paul, who was at the game, shout out to Uncle Paul, he was like, hey, um, Who's this? Uh, I forget what number trip Chip is, <laughs> but he's like, did everyone else hurt, or did they explain on TV why why why, why he's running? Um, so, and it's nothing against Chip number nineteen. It's just that um, look, man, you knew Travian Henderson was out for the game. You knew, hey, Mayan, he maybe he's a little bit banged up. But what about that Dallin Hayden guy who had one hundred and forty six yeah. yards against exactly Maryland exactly just last week? And you know what they did? They, you know what they did for him uh, on last Saturday? Two carries for seven yards. I mean, WTF. And I'm not talking about the Washington football team. With, <laughs> with all of that, we had a lot of plays out there that we left um, on the field. Ohio State's up 20 to 17 at halftime. Okay. And everybody I've seen, I heard it time and again, and time again, time again, time again, time again. Okay. People that don't watch Ohio State every fucking game like I do. Are going to say, well, you know, hey, they just didn't show up for this game. No. The concerns I've had all year has been the run game. I saw some more on Saturday. It was a little bit better. And then these these defensive backs I've said all year, Jeff Akuda isn't out there. Okay. And if I want to go back further, Chris Gamble isn't out there. Mike Dawson. Oh, throwback way back. We don't machine. have those guys. Denzel Ward, he is not on that secondary. There, there might be somebody. You got Denzel Burke. And people say, oh, he's a high, he's a high ranked recruit and everything like that, but ain't playing to that level. I'm not saying those guys can't become that, but right now you can't put those guys on island, you know, and that's something we'll talk about. All that being said, I heard time and time again, oh, how state was dominated the second half. Technically speaking, <laughs> we were dominated in the fourth quarter. Because I'm gonna tell you right now, we were up 2017 at halftime. We left some points on the field. At the end of the third quarter, Michigan's up 24 to 20. We were down by four points. With seven and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter, would you like to guess what, what the score was? Go ahead. Trey, I want you to go ahead and guess who had the lead and by how much was seven and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter. I want you to guess. Uh, was it 24-23, maybe? I forget. Okay. Michigan had an eight-point lead okay, eight point. with seven and a half minutes left in the fourth. So that does not say to me that they dominated the second half. They dominated the fourth quarter. And then guess what? Our defense looked a lot like what it did last year. Busted plays. Here you go. One play, they take it to the house. 75-yard um, run, 80-yard run, whatever it is. I saw some stat that I think this is the first time that you've had, like, 
was it three or four plays of over 60, you know, single plays over 60 yards versus the top, you know, AP top five team. So, you know, mine Williams, I think he only had, if I'm looking at this right, eight carries for 34 yards. That being said, man, that's a 4.3 yard average. Okay. So I've already mentioned Dallin Hayden, two carries for seven yards. And they say, well, hey, you know, maybe he's just a, a freshman. Maybe he's not ready for this. But look, man, last week against Maryland, he had 27 carries for 146 yards. That's a five-point yard average. So if that was just happened last week and you got other guys banged up, am I missing something that Trip uh, trained him? <laughs> and he looked. He started out strong and he came out strong. But what, what what am I missing that then it wasn't he wasn't there all year? I thought if anything, if you're going to convert a linebacker to running back, why not have Steel Chambers? So I guess maybe you need that from a linebacking standpoint. What's most dis- disappointing about this game is like, look. People are going to say, hey, you're just a biased Buckeye fan. Eh, some of that's true, but I can also be objective enough. And if I go back to the 2020 National Championship game on Ohio State, Alabama, played Alabama. Now, before that game, we crushed Clemson in, in the uh, semifinal. But when we played against Alabama, you know what? I watched that game and I said, who was it? Who, who won the Heisman that year? Is that wide receiver? Final? Was it was Devontae Smith? Is that his name? Yep. That's right. Okay. We had no answer for him. We could not stop him. And I said, look, I hate to admit it. I, I hate it sucks. They're just a better team. We play that game 10 times. They went eight or nine of them. Okay. Yeah. But when I look at this game on Saturday, here, here's what I'll tell you. <clears throat> Ryan Day got out coached and Michigan was more disciplined. But the only unit on that team that is more talented, maybe is more talented than Ohio State's unit, is the offensive line. Okay. And then you could argue, hey, maybe the running back is better. But he was out two plays, and he was out. And now um, Blake Corum is out for the you know the season. He had running, or he had a knee surgery, and he's out. So the most disappointing thing is we had the more talented team, and but we didn't have the more disciplined team, and he got out coached. Here's the other thing: if you're up 2017 at halftime, and hey, it's working. Even Urban Meyer talked about it at halftime. Well, okay, well, let's go ahead and change to a zone. Let's just keep everything in front of us. Just don't give up the big play. And here's the thing, J.J. McCarthy, you are who I thought you were. And I do not mean that as a compliment in the words of Dennis Green, all right? You know, I'm going to go ahead and hit the microphone and slap. You are what I thought you were, okay? You're not a damn good thrower, okay? People are like, well, he made some big plays. Yeah, here's what he did. Here's a wide open here's a wide open pass. Don't miss it. Here's another busted coverage. Don't miss it. I will give him that because some guys will miss on those wide open throws, but those are busted coverages. They did some zero coverages, and these DBs are not good enough to go and be on those islands. We have said it time and time again, and we got exposed in that regard, you know. And so what I'll say is as disappointing as what Saturday was, as disappointing as what Saturday was, especially when I know we have the town. Now, we play that game again. If it's coached the same way without any adjustments, yeah, we're going to fucking lose it. And right now, let's just say Utah beats USC tomorrow. I don't necessarily want to play Georgia. <laughs> tomorrow trey might want us to have us play georgia do i think we're good enough to come out of that if you make adjustments because trey let me ask you something real quick and then i want to get some of chris's thoughts and then i'll go back on another rant but when georgia lost to alabama for last year in the sec championship how hopeful were you that they would come back and then go and win the national championship yeah i didn't feel the best it was the whole you know alabama had broken our hearts and I think they were, were like 0 and 6 against them. So yeah, I didn't have the best uh the best feeling. I had a had a pretty good feeling after we, you know, came and punched uh Michigan in the mouth in the Orange Bowl. But the, the way to beat Georgia, which you guys have it, not uh, to to be really honest, I don't really want to play you guys. I'm kind of pulling for uh USC because they got a garbage defense. Is um gotta have an explosive quarterback that stands in the pocket and you guys have explosive receivers, and that's the way you beat Georgia. Um if you don't have any wide outs or like Michigan, I think it's a bad matchup for uh, for a bad matchup for Michigan again. So, so, so what I'll say is, and you people just say yeah. it's spoiled grapes. And look, man, yeah, I, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's it's sour grapes, and it isn't it isn't sour grapes as much because I can recognize greatness. I can recognize Bryce Young. That's a pretty damn good quarterback. Mm-hmm. Uh, Hendon Hooker, man, for Tennessee, pretty damn good quarterback. Okay. Caleb Williams, pretty damn good quarterback. A guy like that beats you, and you're like, okay, you know what? That sucks. I don't like it, but then so be it. And I'm not saying JJ's complete trash, but he is what I thought he was. And, you know, and that's going to come up. That's going to catch up with him in the playoff because somebody else is going to be say, I would look to the way Georgia played Tennessee, and you said, you know what? And you did that against a better quarterback. 
your DBs uh-huh. are good enough to put these guys on islands. Because guess what? Michigan's wide receivers, not better than Ohio State's wide receivers. But as I will tell you this much, Michigan's wide receivers are better than our DBs. Uh-huh. <laughs> I will tell you that much. So, <clears throat> but you have somebody else, as long as you don't have busted coverages, as long as you have a defensive coordinator, because we've paid our defensive coordinator a lot of fucking money, and he failed on Saturday. Absolute failure, and it's unacceptable. So, I mean, that, those are some of my thoughts. Chris, why don't, uh, why don't you give me some of your thoughts, and I'll go on another rant. Uh, well, <clears throat> biggest thing I was disappointed in, like you said, we got outcoached. Um, talent-wise, we got it. We're playing – we played – or we've got the talent to be a top three, top two team, for sure, without a doubt. Um, but, again, Ryan Day, I don't know if he just put too much thought and just kind of went through the uh, – analysis or paralysis by analysis but it was just it was frustrating to watch the lead slip away and then just completely implode by giving away those big plays uh the one thing we kind of talked about before they i'm gonna bring in a little bit of cincinnati Bengals talk uh they they challenged us a lot right they they by playing deep, they kept the, the they kept the receivers in front of us or in front of them, and they dared us to run. And what do we do? We we stop running, right? We laid an effective ground game. This, you know, shout out to Chip Trainum, number nineteen. I just met him or just figured out who this guy was, but he's effective. <laughs> he was effective. Six yards of carry, but we we bail on the run. Well, let me you know, ask for most you of that this. second half, not, they dared us to throw it, or they dared a, us to run it, and we look, we refused. And he's a junior yeah. linebacker on here. Hilarious. Anyway, go ahead. Sorry. Chris, let yeah. me ask you. Let me ask you, and then you go back. One one quick interjection, and then go back on. It's nothing against Chip. I got no problem against Chip, man. He he ran fine, but if you're that coach, even if he's a freshman, I get it. If you're like at my end, look, man, uh, four yards of carry, eh, still pretty damn good, you know. You do that three times, that's a first down. But if Dallin Hayden had 146 yards for you last week, 5.4 yards a carry, and he's been a running back the whole fucking year, why not go ahead and use him more than two times? If it ain't broke. But that's my whole thing. So, again, nothing against Chip. You know, he did a solid job, solid job in those 14 carries. But if the run's working, if you're seeing dividends, why stop? Or if you're seeing effective – if you're getting some – some good results from one maybe two guys why not keep those same two rotating in mine williams again he might have been banged up seemed pretty effective even when banged up so at the worst case rotate him in and out still gonna get some still gonna get effective runs i that just drove me nuts you know you see some dividends being paid by chip then all of a sudden, you know, again, shout out Xavier Johnson, but he comes in for a couple carries. And you're like, where'd this guy come from? Why is he in? So just just really confusing and really I struggled to figure out what our what our strategy was for most of the game. We didn't make any the key adjustments that we needed to make. I feel like uh yeah, just things slipped out of our hands. That's the best way I can think of it. Slipped out of our hands, and then all of a sudden. Those fourth quarter explosive plays, this kid, Donovan Edwards, his backup guy, blows the doors open with these touchdowns. Who's the other kid? Cornelius? That's um, so I think name. I think I think uh, yeah, Donovan, Donovan Edwards was your your main running back there. And then Cornelius, yeah. he's a wide receiver. Yeah, he gashes us for a 75 yeah. yarder. So four receptions, 162 touchdowns. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. So Watching your rival just uh, stomp a mud hole in in the fourth quarter, the back half of the fourth quarter, that's the – that's the only worst feeling is losing by one. Well, it was was a worse feeling in 2019 when we lost to Clemson because I said not only were we the better team 2019. I know I'm talking about a different game here. We lost to Clemson. Okay, and I still say 2019 is the best team we had. I've been saying that for a while um, in, in the Ryan Day era, okay? Um, we, we played better in that game, and then you lost right at the end. So that was more heartbreaking because, hey, look, right now, as, as, as Ohio State fan, it sucks, but I'm just going to have to be happy with our two decades of dominance, two decades of dominance, okay? And before I'm going to – I'll make a real quick comment about the end of the game stuff. 
hey, man, that stuff comes in a rivalry. They want to go and plant the flag and everything else. And Jim Harbaugh's like, that's just part of it. Uh Uh-huh, that's just part of it. Okay, (laughs) remember that. So, you know, if the Ohio State players next year go to Michigan and we win, and we plant the flag or drop the two spot right in the middle on the the, the M, (laughs) it's part of the rivalry, motherfuckers. My problem with Desmond Howard repeatedly, hey, man, you're a Michigan guy, and that's fine. But it doesn't go both ways because I've listened to him enough and be like, well, you know, he has those. Well, you know, we shouldn't be doing that and all the other stuff. But as long as Michigan doing it, you don't have a problem. So it doesn't go both ways. If it's a rivalry thing and you're saying, hey, you know, whether well, Hase is doing that or Michigan's yeah. doing that, hey, it's just part of the rivalry and everything else. But you have a different perspective when it's being done to you as compared to when you're doing it. The other thing I'm going to say, and I'm going to talk real quick about, you know, the era now as compared to the Jim Trestle era. Everybody knows Trestle is that button up head coach, Trestle ball punt, field position, everything else. But here's what he did. He understood the importance of the game, but his guys also played loose. So even though Trestle was buttoned up, man, when the Michigan game came around, he says, hey, I'm going to have my guys play loose. He would do stuff he didn't do all year. And players, man, they bought into that. So the question is, how do you take it and you have it be the most important game of the year, but you also have it play loose? You know, I, I put it on as, as a coaching failure. I put it really more on Jim Knowles. But, look, Ryan Day hired Jim Knowles. So I think at times and that you could see, especially at the end, when um, CJ had a couple interceptions, they were pressing. So that's <clears> – <throat> I really go and I bring that back to – I bring that back to coaching, but if you had 10 yards rushing in that first half, man, you don't need to go and do these. Um, okay, we'll just leave these DBs on these islands and these zero blitz coverages, right? The, mm-hmm. <laughs> there's nobody there if you don't get home. I just don't think there was a need. You were very successful doing what you're doing. One of our concerns, I know, Chris, you'll, you'll speak to this as well, is that CJ, I don't need you to be JT Barrett. I don't need you to be Cam Newton. Um, in the NFL, I don't need you to run all the time, but when it's there, run the damn ball, man. At okay? least pretend, like try. Run Just when it's try, needed. Dude. You don't need to. We don't have to have this, all these design run plays. We'll run when it's needed. Okay. My my other my other issue is these wide receivers, man. You've got the best wide receivers in the country, okay, and you probably have the best wide receiver and Marvin Harrison Jr. So why not put us some 50-50 balls against Michigan's DPs? You know, at the end of the day, here's what I would go and I would give to Michigan. They're the more disciplined team. They're the better coach team. And they actually made adjustments in the second half. Okay. Now, look, I'm not going to go and crown Jim Harbaugh's ass either because, hey, you feel pretty good right now. You still started out 0-5 against Ohio State in the rivalry. And if you didn't push out in 2020, for everybody that doesn't remember, you pushed out. In the 2020 game, yeah, COVID numbers and all the other stuff, they would have been curd stopped. And that's what Ryan Day was talking about. Hey, I'm going to hang 100 on them. In 2020, they might have done that. You go back to the 2020 season, I think Michigan, that shortened COVID season, had like one or two wins. It was real bad, you know? So that was their quote-unquote reset. But that being said, Harbaugh right now, he's still 2-5 and five against Ohio State. He started 0-5. Let's not forget this. Now, the other people that people talk about, I don't buy into the whole narrative that, hey, the whole toughness thing, and that's a Michigan narrative. I'm not buying into that. The thing of it is, nor should the coaching staff. you got plenty of tough guys. you got the more talented players. You look pretty damn tough in the second half. (laughs) I'm sorry, you look pretty damn tough in the first half, not so much the second half. If Michigan, if their program's kind of like that whole, hey, we're a pickup truck, and look at all the, you know, I'm making the car comparison. Hey, we're, we're, we're the pickup truck, and look at all this, you know, cargo we can haul. Okay. Ohio State, you're the Ferrari. Don't try to be the pickup truck. You got Marvin Harrison Jr., all these other talented wide receivers. Be the Ferrari. You know what? Speed by the pickup truck. So don't get caught up into that narrative. You know, the, the, the problem is when we lost to Michigan last year, that was an aberration, okay? This is the first time they beat Ohio State since 2011. But now when you lose to them this year, now it's a trend. <laughs> so what are you going to do? What are you going to do to stop that? You know, things we've been talking about all year, these DBs, issues in the running game, you know, it finally caught up with us. Now, if we were to play Michigan again and we coached the game the same way, I don't feel so confident. However, if we made some coaching adjustments, if we came in with a better plan, if you had those guys play loose with nothing to lose, because I'll tell you what, man, in that second half, I will say this much, Michigan didn't look like the team that had nothing to lose and just cutting it loose. But J.J. McCarthy, let me read you his stats, and you tell me if this is Heisman worthy. 
Okay. You tell me if he's Bryce Young and I'm missing. You tell me if he's Caleb Williams. You tell me if he's Hendon Hooker. 12 for 24. Does that sound impressive to you? And talking about discipline, talking about discipline, D. Scott, when you're out of bounds, don't headbutt someone. Okay? <laughs> don't fucking headbutt someone out of bounds. That's on discipline. Uh, That's on mean? coaching. Uh, you, you can play with a controlled rage. Controlled rage I'm all about. Here's the other thing. That one of those other drives early in the early in the game, man, they're face guarding the guy, and boom, hey, pass interference, dude. It was like third and a mile. It was like third and nineteen or something, and boom. So there's plenty of things out there we do better, and we don't make him look like JJ Brady, okay? <laughs> and look, man, there's other times there's plenty of damn good quarterbacks out there and everything like that. And I just didn't see that. And the only other thing here, too, Chris, and I want to get to your thoughts on another thing, and then Trey, is they talked about him in the, in the, in the I think it was the third quarter, okay? And we were on our own territory. And you go back, and I've heard people talk about it, and I've watched a little bit myself. Um, CJ, I think it was like fourth and five, fourth and six, something like that. And maybe we were at, mm, we'll call it 35, 40 yard, 40 yard line uh, of Michigan's, you know, oh. whatever. We still had. Uh, where they, they wave the punt on for it. <clears throat> but here's what it is. If you go back and you look for that, that was a fake punt. That was a fake punt, and everybody knew it was a fake punt. You know who the only person who didn't get the message? The only person who didn't get the message was the center. <laughs> go back and look at it. And if he would have gone and that would have been a fake punt, you'd stay, he'd still be running. And then guess what? Boom, you go up and you get you get a lead in that game. There's plenty of opportunities that we have. Look, man, I will give this to most Michigan. They won the they won the game. And we were out coached, more disciplined team, no doubt in my mind about that. But I didn't, I, I can't honestly watch that game and say, well, they're just head and shoulders better than us. We don't have a fucking answer for them. Because when I watched 2020 National Championship game, Ohio State and Alabama, I said, fuck, I don't like to admit this. That band was just a better team. Okay. So that's what's tougher for me to swallow when you lose the team that's not as talented because they were out coached. Any other thoughts there, Chris? Oh, point well made. The toughest part about being 0-2, especially this second or this game, knowing that we were we had the talent. We had a semi-effective game plan, at least the first half of the game. Now they're in our head. Like so losing one, okay, it's it it stings, but you can you can flush that and you can kind of you can reset, but you lose that first game, then you come back and then you bait you give it away and then you blow the fourth quarter you get blown out the fourth quarter they're in our head so now let's see how what does ryan day do how does he rebound how does he loosen up and how does he keep the staff loose enough to to just come back with a vengeance and tilt the scales back in our favor what what do you think when you when you you hear the whole toughness thing and you're my analogy the ferrari versus the pickup truck dude don't get in here's the thing don't try to be – don't try to out Michigan, Michigan. You know, you're Ohio State. Do it a different way. Here's what I'll no, say about so Georgia. That's, last year that in part. the playoff game, and last year in the playoff game, Georgia didn't try to play Michigan football. But they played Georgia football, and they could stopped them. Okay? So don't try to play Michigan football. Play Ohio State football. I get that part. So if, if that's our identity, if we're not the, the big, bruising, physical team, then we don't have to we, – we stick to our team identity. What I do miss is a consistent bruiser type running back, right? Where's our uh, our Beanie Wells type guy? Where's heck even J.K. He was uh, short but like a little fire plug. Mayan, he's do you he's not think Mayan's that guy? Do you he not think is, he's a healthy but guy? is he healthy when he's healthy and when he's consistent? But I feel like the last couple of games uh-huh. he was healthy enough to be consistent. But maybe again, the head coaches know a lot more than just some guy, but. From my perspective, mine was effective enough, but we need a consistent – somebody who can plug in and just, you know, grind out five, six yards and just tire and weaken the defense or just wear them out. And we need one. We need one or two you know, on our roster just to, to have handy for games like this. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's maybe something maybe next year. Who was the guy? And I'm, I'm drawing a blank. He came from Oklahoma, and then he had a great rushing – uh, performance back in 2020 it was a Trey Serum, uh, Trey, Trey Sermon. Sermon. Yes, sir. and dude, we got him. So that's kind of what we need. We also need some some DBs, and we need some depth of DB come transfer portal time, or maybe we've got a guy that's gonna 
grow into that. We just don't have it now. The, the thing of it is, <clears throat> everybody says, you know, there's some things out there. Well, hey, would Ohio State still get in? You know, now we've seen the rankings, and there are, they are what we thought they were. We see some rankings, and we'll talk about the playoffs in a second, but I want to get Trey's thoughts. Um, but look, man, if Georgia, Michigan, Georgia, Michigan, and regardless in the playoffs, if TCU, TCU loses, they may still be in. If they lose big, eh, we got a shot, okay? I think we really have to root for Utah, and that's that's who we that's, – that's how we get in. But if those things don't happen, look, <laughs> you, you really have nobody to blame but yourself, Ohio State. So I can't put this on anybody else. You're saying, oh, if there's an expanded, expanded playoff, what we found out earlier today, there is going to be an expanded playoff starting in 2024. The answers are all your questions is money. They got that worked out. So next year, 2023, there'll be a 14 playoff. And then after that, starting in 2024, there'll be, you know, the 12 team playoff. Okay. But regardless, if you don't fix these other issues, if you don't go and come up with some better game plans, then forget about it. So, um, I mean, yeah, I, I think mine could be that bruising running back to answer your question, Chris. But yeah, we could probably use another one. I, I don't. Yeah, he's not as good. he's not a Beanie Wells, and he's not a, he's not a J.K. Dobbins. You know what I mean? I do, what I do like though is he runs angry, right? <laughs> so if you like that, what was it? Did he have five touchdowns that game? Or yeah, he had five. That's correct. Yeah. So whatever we did, whatever he had for breakfast that game, why couldn't we give him the same breakfast or same protein shakes, whatever, to keep him going? Why didn't he play in Michigan? Why didn't he? Why did he not play Saturday? That's that's killing me. Why didn't he not get more snaps? Well, he played, and they say he's banged up. But look, man, even then, it was it was eight carries, thirty four yards. But dude, that's that's four I yards. I get that part. Four yards of carry. I, I get the post mortem part. The the four yards of carry seems effective enough. But he strikes me as a guy who, unless there's a ligament that's completely torn off, or unless it's just unbearable, till he strikes me as a guy to grit it out and and make them pay with his running style. And, and some but of again, 50, I'm not a coach. And some of these 50-50 balls, man, what did you like to see? Marvin Harrison Jr. or Emeka Abuka go up to some 50-50 balls to get some of these DBs? That, that's yeah, so they're pretty good. Where were they? <clears throat> you know, and they still, Emeka had nine, nine receptions, 125 yards. That's an average of almost 14 yards. A reception, Marvin Harrison, mm -hmm. seven, care, or seven receptions, 120 yards. That's 17 average. He said, now, <laughs> if you're doing the math on that, if you're averaging 14 yards a catch, 17 yards a catch, so that should mean you should be getting a first down every on every catch. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, I think besides trying to figure this out, best case scenario, uh, Utah beats USC tomorrow night, we get in, or TCU loses big. If one of those two things happen, we have, but we better have a transformation as like Georgia did when they lost to – they got pounded by Alabama in the SEC championship game last year, and they were on the low level. Trey can talk about he was on suicide watch. And then, but look, man, I will say this about your boy, uh, Mr. Elite himself, Kirby Smart. Okay, they came up with a better game plan. They made those adjustments. Okay. So, because we don't do come up with a better game plan, forget about it. We're not, we're not, we're not advancing to anything, you know. Trey, would you, how much of the games did you watch? Or were you busy watching, you know, Georgia play Georgia Tech? Yeah, I was, I was uh, going back and forth. Um, first off, go Trojans, because I uh, don't really want to play you guys. That's another <laughs> thing. Uh, so here's what I thought, like, <clears throat> first off, game day was there, 12 o'clock, revenge game. You guys said everything. Like, I, I was thinking, you're going to smoke these guys. And then when I saw Quorum, two carries, I'm like, man, they got this. So I, I'd go back and forth. But uh, J.J. McCarthy – Dropping some bombs out there, like I said, I know 12 for 24, not flashy, but he hit some big ones, so that was big. And then the Donovan Edwards kid I heard had a banged-up arm, so he's basically one arm dude, went for 22 carries for 216, just running up and down the field. Um, Let me ask you this. Let me ask you yeah. – let me interject something real quick. Everything you saw, though, was, like, just highlights. You never – you didn't see any of it live. Is that right? Yeah, I watched it live. I went back and forth. Okay. Yeah. So on the JJ, the fourth, quarter, the fourth quarter was was, up, was shocked me. Did you see what I saw? That yeah, they're just wide open guys on busted coverages. Yeah. Okay. So my my question is is going back to the physical thing. I think that's two straight years. Being honest, I don't know if it's like 
defensive line in the trenches. They just wanted it more if, they, if uh, Harbaugh came with a, with a game plan. So I know you guys had some meltdowns, and I was listening to some podcasts and everything. It's like, if this continues to be a thing with Ryan Day, if he loses this game, like, is he in trouble at all? Because, I mean, I know you guys – I mean, you guys are definitely – top two or three in the country every year. Like, is this going to be a thing? That's just one thing I had is anything with Ryan Day and you keep hearing the NFL rumors. Here's, and here's why it was <clears> – here's why it was so surprising to me, okay? This is his fifth loss, but he's been good in revenge games. His first loss ever was to Clemson, and then he redeemed that in 2020, and he beat Clemson. Wow. They lost to Alabama, hasn't had a chance to, you know, uh, redeem that. And, hey, you lost to Alabama, get in line, Okay. Lost to Oregon, whatever. And then the last two years of Michigan. I'm not ready to panic yet because what I don't want to become is I don't want to become Nebraska. Okay, we're a long way from becoming Nebraska, but everybody that remembers the early 2000s had a coach there, Frank Solich, who then got canned and he um, went on to Ohio. But, you know, a 10-2 season wasn't good enough for Nebraska. 10-2 wasn't good enough for – 10-2 uh, 10, 10 and two wasn't good enough for Frank Stolich uh, in, 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 in Nebraska. So we got to let you go. And then he went on to OU, Ohio University, and, you know, did a pretty good job coaching there. Okay. Here's my problem. You better watch this slippery slope because then all of a sudden you bring another guy and, you know, you're, you're horrible, you know. Yeah. And then you're like, oh, geez, well, we'll bring in this Bo Pelini guy. I think he does. Well, we don't really like Bo. We kind of really like our coach. And then he was nine and three. Yeah, but, you know, you didn't win enough big games or whatever. But, you didn't you didn't like Bo Pelini. Okay, we'll bring in a guy we like more. And then you're doing six and five, and you're doing five and six. Well, Mike Riley wasn't the right fit. Don't worry, don't worry. We got this guy who used to be, you know, he was on the last national championship team, even though it was a split national championship with Michigan in 1997. But hey, don't worry, Scott Frost. He understands this program. He's going to turn everything around. Well, how'd that turn out for you? Okay, so it's a slippery slope. Of, it is. Oh, this guy doesn't work. I'll just go somewhere else. So I'm not ready to can Ryan Day. Don't fire Ryan Day. Let me remind you, Jim Harbaugh, how much of a complete failure he was. He started out 0-5. Well, he's 2-0 the last two years, but he's still 2-5. Okay? So he's got to win three more games against Ohio State to just be 500. You follow what I'm saying? And everybody's like, well, hey, Ryan Day is 1-2. That's true. If they played him in 2020, I guarantee you he'd be 2-2. But – Last year's an aberration. Now we got a trend. So what are you going to do to change that? Because what you're doing is not working. And it is a coaching failure. I put it more. Does he need to give up some of those call playing duties? You know, you're not going to fire the D coordinator. You just did that last year. But D coordinator, you must do better. Because here's what I guarantee you. I guarantee you this. If they don't make the playoffs, we've seen CJ Stroud for the last time in Ohio State uniform. I would be shocked. We saw him again in Ohio State uniform. You got a lot of talent that was wasted. That was another thing I was going to say. Oh, absolutely. And, you, you know, you're also not going to see – you're not going to see Jackson Pacific Jigba ever play again. The only way you're going to get him back is if you have a playoff run. So, I hope we have a playoff run. But, look, man, that's life. It doesn't always work out. You know, Trey, back – what was it? Twenty Was it 2018 when you played Alabama in the championship game? Yeah. And I think – all right, well, that, that didn't work out. worked out better last year. But it didn't work out. So yeah, we were in right 2018. Oh, maybe so we got in. It's it's incredibly difficult. You know, was it was it 2017 or 2018 that we, we you you lost in the championship game to Bama? Uh, 2017, Cincinnati. Okay, so what I'm saying is we had our chances. If we don't get in, then hey man, play better. Go win your rivalry game. And he's like, Yeah, I wish there was a 12 team playoff, but these are problems that I think can't be fixed. The only question is, can they be fixed this year? All right. Hey, but if you guys don't get in, we'll try to beat Michigan. Get, we'll try to beat Michigan again for you. Okay. Hey, there you go, man. Please, can you, if you could go ahead and do what we, we, what we can't, you know, because in, up until yeah. last year, right? When was the last time before last year that you beat? When was the last time you, that Georgia beat? Alabama, like 2007 or something, right? 2007, yeah, we were like one and six. That's right. That's why it was big. So up until last year, we had more wins, meaning Ohio State against Alabama than what you did over that same time spirit, right? Exactly. And now we both got one win, right? So look, mm-hmm. hey, over the last two years, if you can have two wins over Michigan, something that we can't, more power you, to you. Because you don't want Michigan to win a national title. You know that'll burn You damn bit, right? right I don't. You know, Hugh, Hugh damn <laughs> right. Your friends Look, from man, the north. If we don't get in, here's what's happening. 
here's here's and you don't mind i want to hear this but i'm saying anyways look i'm rooting for tcu go horn frogs and then go usc and then go georgia fuck michigan okay and i know it means more and all that other bullshit but you know fuck the sec all that type of stuff so that's how i would rank them there you go all right well chris things on mute there chris you there Oh, can you hear me now? Oh, crap. Okay. How about now? All right, Scott, one last question here. So, if when do we become worried about Coach Day or do we become worried? So, if the two extends to, God forbid, (laughs) three. Hey, what do you do if you lose in the Rose Bowl? Don't don't you fucking say that, Chris. Don't you fucking say that. (laughs) Um, And when do we become worried? I'm worried now, man. I'm worried now because, look, whether you like to admit it or not, NFL's calling. And it, no, well, here's the thing, whether you like to admit it or not, okay, right now, Jim Harbaugh is living rent free in Ryan Day's head. And you know who was in living rent free in Urban Meyer, or I'm sorry, in uh, Jim Harbaugh's head for five years is Urban Meyer. Okay. Yep. So I'm concerned now, however, because I don't want to become Nebraska or one of these, I don't want to. I probably have to see another couple years of it, and then it's like, hey, man, you have to win this game. Now, with the expanded playoff, we can also say, okay, well, hey, there's going to be an expanded playoff, so if we still go and do some damage in the playoff. We'll talk about the playoff, expanded playoff here shortly, but that's the other thing. All the other people, oh, this game's not going to mean as much. I mean, that's a bunch of bullshit, okay? Because here's the other side of it. Let me tell you something. Everybody out there talks about – you know, how they love March Madness and how it's made. Some people, hey, it's the best sporting event of the year. Right now, as much as I love college football, it has the worst postseason. It just does. Most of them are blowout games. They're, hey, you still, might get yeah. the, you still might get the same four teams. You might. You might very well get the same four teams. You're also going to get some upsets, especially with some home and aways. Before I met Trey, um, Trey didn't even know that football was played outside the South, you know. <laughs> and so what it is, you're going to get some of these Southern teams – you know, these pussies are going to have to come up north to Ohio, to um, to Michigan, maybe Wisconsin someday because Luke Fickle's there. What I'm getting at is hey. people are like, oh, it's too cold and everything. Oh, hold on a second. Do they, do they not play? Do these guys not want to go on to the NFL? Do they not play games in January at, in Green Bay? Or games in January outside in New England? Okay. So play those cold weather games. Okay. That expanded playoff would be great. Now, how's my, here's my comparison to March Madness. If you're Carolina or you're Duke and you lost to, if you're Carolina and you lost to Duke, you said, damn, son of a bitch, fuck those guys, right? Mm-hmm. But then you go on to win the national championship that year, who cares, right? And vice versa. So if we go and we lost to Michigan, yes, it needs to be corrected. Don't do that. Stop that. Keep going. But if we're a team is good enough and then we don't have to play them, okay, because we have a team to build, we have a team – built to beat a team like Georgia, but we have to keep on, you know, we have to, to get to Georgia. First off, yes, we have to play well enough. We have to uh, have the right coaching strategy, but you have to first get past the team like Michigan. Here's what it is. The last two years, Ohio state lost the Michigan test. Okay. We Mm -hmm. defeated in that, but a team that's also built like Ohio state, but right now has better coaching is Georgia. Well, Georgia passed that Michigan test last year. Curb stop, curb stop. So I hope it happens again this year. So that's that's one of the differences, you know. I guess that's what it is like being elite, isn't that right, Trey? That's it. You're the leader, you're not. But, dogs on like dogs on top. There, but are you concerned? When do you get concerned, Chris? About I, and do you still consider yourself a casual fan? When do you get so concerned about Ryan Day? <laughs> uh, I <laughs> I am a casual <laughs> fan. Um, I get concerned. Well. I'm uncomfortable now. Next year, God forbid, if he doesn't turn something around, then then I'm concerned. You're basically again. It, it, it's great that he's. What is he versus uh, Harbaugh, Scotty? One and two. All right, so he's one and two. Because twenty twenty was never played. Right. However, you're on a two two game losing streak. Big games, rivalry games. So if you're zero for three in the rivalry. The boosters, sure. Hey, glad we got to another bowl game. That's what Ohio State does. We get to the postseason. That's what Ohio State does. The last decade, the precedent has been set, though. We also beat Michigan. We don't want to go back decade, to the 90 the last sky. 20 years. Yeah, the so last even 20 better. Years. The last thing we want to avoid, the 90s. 
the John Cooper 90s. There you go. So, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go to the big house to next year. Yeah, so, uh, again, we get disrespected. So, we lose last year. Everybody, you know, whatever. Rah, rah, Michigan, whatever. Congrats, you beat us. This year, they beat us at home, smoked us, technically mm-hmm. 21 points. We, we lose at home. They kill our shot for uh, just – we lose control of our destiny, right? So it's a double gut punch. And then they kick us in the uh, kick us in the sack. They plant the flag at midfield. And guess what? We can do nothing about it. We just have to sit there and eat it. I so, hope I hope if we get back in the playoffs and we are somehow meet them of a championship game, I show I hope we can we have the opportunity to show where they can plant that fucking flag if you see what I'm saying. Yeah, I get that. But the thing that eats me up though is the fact that we are now hoping and we lose control of our own destiny like we had our ticket written i feel like we paid enough attention we gave michigan enough respect and prep but we lost control of our destiny we didn't we didn't bring it home so now we miss we lose the game we're over two right we're over two last two years we missed the big 10 championship game we are kicked out of the top four and we're just waiting and hoping and i hate so- hoping well, I, you know, or anything. If you uh, hope in one hand and shit in the other, see which one fills up first. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the problem with that. But let me ask you that same question. If, okay, if Ohio State lost every year to Michigan, but in a 12 team expanded playoff, which will come, we only have one more year of the 14 playoff, and then we'll go to that expanded 12 team playoff. But then we went on to win a national championship. Would you not do that? Because one of the years that Alabama under Jalen Hurts, they won on to win national title. I think it was the year against Georgia. They lost to Auburn. They lost to Auburn, <clears throat> got into the playoffs, and won the natty. So you're like, yeah, I want to beat our rival and everything like that. Ooh, but I'll take – because, dude, when it all comes up to it, I, I look at it this way, man. Okay. Ohio State lost to Michigan in the year 2000. Okay. They lost to him in 2003. Lost to him in 2011. 2021 and 2022. Mm-hmm. So you're doing the math on that. That was the first time there's been back to back Michigan wins since 99 and 2000. You know who played in one of those games? Tom fucking Brady. Okay. And Tom Brady ain't out there right now. JJ McCarthy. I'm huh, JJ Burrow's out there, though. So what I'm getting at is it's been a long time. So I got 22 years and 17 of those have been Ohio State wins. Well, I guess 16 because, we, as I mentioned, they pushed out of 2020. So I mean, look, you still want to beat your biggest rival, but at the end of the day, I want a national championship. Hey, we lost. Hey, look, in, in 2014, we lost to Virginia Tech. Yeah, that sucks. And I worked with a guy from Virginia Tech, and I got to hear, oh, hey, what about that bare front defense and all this other bullshit? Yeah, yeah, okay, fine, whatever. But you know, at the end of the year, who's got the natty? Not Virginia Tech. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, and now, now, now Virginia Tech isn't our biggest rival, but you get what I'm saying, you know? One of my other customers, man, he was just like, oh, yeah, I remember that year we beat you. And I said, hey, look, dude, if you told me I could lose to Virginia Tech, he, he was the Virginia Tech guy. And I was like, dude, if you tell me I could lose to Virginia Tech every year and I win a national championship, sign me up for that. Because the next year, in 2015, we went on the road to play Virginia Tech, give them a beatdown, no national championship, no playoff run. So, I mean, that's not exactly how things always work. But, I mean, so my question to you, Chris, if you went ahead and you lost to Michigan for the next three years, would you somehow got in the playoff and expand the playoff and he won a national championship? Would you sign up for that? I mean, if you drop your hot dog in the ground, do you still eat it? Do you pick it up and still eat it? Yes. Hey, watch, it's, yes. I mean, it's been five seconds or not? Five, yeah. five second rule. Yeah. Hey, watch yeah. it down. With, yeah. I mean, yeah. Yeah. It might be a little crunchy. It might not taste as great if you miss uh, knocking off some of the dirt, but it's still the hot dog and it still tastes good. So, I mean, yeah, the national <laughs> championship is still awesome. Still would do it. Um, Taking a loss to Michigan, though, it never feels good. I can never say, like, yeah, I'm cool with it. So that's, that's, that's the like thing that I want to get a, away from. Taking a shot to the nuts, you know, you know, <laughs> right before you do something very pleasurable. So, anyway, <laughs> you can follow what I'm saying. So, now, Trey, I'm going to ask you that same question. Um, I'm going to ask you that same question, not the nut question, but because I know you enjoy the pain. But <laughs> my question to you is, if you lost every year to Alabama or Florida or insert big rival here but then you want to win a national champion national championship that year would you sign up for it 
Because losing at the SEC championship game, yeah, you were, uh, you know, on suicide watch and, you know, didn't want me to be on the podcast anymore and you hated my guests temporarily and all that stuff. But you felt yeah. a little bit better after winning that natty, didn't you? First time in 41 years. Sweet. Yeah. Now, well, I yeah. guess we can go ahead and transition. I would tell you this when I was on um, – after I knew for a fact we were going to lose, but they had that uh, – at, at seven and a half minutes left in the fourth quarter – they had that immediate response with another busted coverage, big run, 75 yard run right to the house. I said, Yeah, I don't think this is our day. Okay. And I'm not talking about Ryan Day. I'm talking about for the Bucks. I said, Okay, I don't think we're going to win this. At that point in time, right when I was about to give up complete, a complete hope and everything like that, I said, You know what I could use? A tasty beverage. And by tasty yeah. beverage, I'm talking about one field of alcohol. You want to tell us about that, Trey? Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Uh, Angry Scott and Casual Chris definitely needed one of these after uh, the Ohio State game. Zero sugar, zero carbs, gluten-free. Live long, live well, live it up. Uh, my personal favorite is the elderberry. You can get it on vivatequilaseltzer.com for a 20% discount. Put in hustle for the promo code. Hustle for 20% discount. And live it up. Viva tequila seltzer.com. It's viva up. Now, what are your thoughts? Some of the other, and Chris, I, I, I'm pretty much done with my anger rant. Unless you have something else to say about the game, I'm going to try to move on in life. Do you have anything uh, else to, to add to uh, what's already been said during, during this post mortem? No, I think the, the horse is dead. We've got our kicks in and uh... Maybe a couple more <laughs> beatings. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe one more um, kick on the way out. I hope you guys. Uh, I hope Michigan you guys sucks. enjoy the. I hope you guys enjoy the Rose Bowl. Well, uh, if they have us, <laughs> I hope we enjoy the four, a fourteen playoff. Hey, look, there look at go. it this way, Trey. Look at it this way. If okay. you were to somehow lose, maybe you'll play Michigan, and you know, then I don't know, man. They here, here's what's going to happen. Um, if, so, if somehow USC loses and we slip in. Georgia and Michigan, you're in, okay? TCU, maybe you're out, maybe you maybe are, maybe you aren't. They're not going to have, just like they didn't want to guarantee a spot for the SEC, they're not going to have – they'll say, oh, this is the way we ranked them and all that other bullshit. Here's the deal. They're going to have – if Ohio State and Michigan both got in, they would have to be on separate – they wouldn't play each other in that first game. I'd be shocked. I agree. Yeah, I agree. Yep. Yep. The only thing I'll say – the only thing I'll say, Georgia gets smoked last year in the SEC championship, comes back. And beats them. We'll go back to the 90s, right? And it was Florida, Florida State, you know? And Florida State wins in a, re, a re, uh, regular season matchup. And then Florida comes back and gets them and smokes them in the championship. Okay. Same thing goes with, uh, shoot, what was it? Was it LSU and Alabama? Was that 2011 or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. LSU wins regular season. Bama comes back. Doesn't Bama doesn't let them get past the 50 yard line in that yep. game? Wins it 20 to zero. So, now, that's, I'm assuming that we can come up with a game plan, but if we can come up with a game plan, I feel pretty good. What are, what are you all's quick thoughts on in terms of college football rankings? And now, not really the college football rankings. I mean, look, those top four teams win, they're in. No, no question about it. But, I mean, what are your thoughts about the expanded playoff? Yeah, I mean, I thought it was about time. Um, I thought it was going to be a little, well, I was thinking 2025, 20, 2026. But um, I do think it's going to be interesting, like what you mentioned uh, earlier, that maybe some uh, SEC schools might have to go up to, you know, Ohio State or Michigan. That could be definitely interesting. We have to go out west and play some games. But um, I think it'll be interesting. I think the first four are going to get a buy, so that'll be even more to win the conference championship so you can rest some players and then kind of let the rest of the field duke it out. But, uh, yeah, I like it. And – uh. I think it's going to be more of a chance to maybe get three SEC teams in there. You know why, Scott? Because it means more. Unless you're so, yeah, playing like, – unless you're Texas A&M like, and you're playing like Texas State or Tennessee playing Georgia State, then it doesn't mean as much, right? Exactly. Hey, I did want to, I did want to put a little dig in here, uh, Scott. We know we know who the best conference was. Who's probably the second best conference this year? Just dig it in a little bit. Uh, Big Ten. Yeah, big. What's that? Big Ten. Come on, man. I'm gonna go with Pac-12 because they got more ranked teams. Do you think they're? Do you agree they're the second best this year now? Not all together, the second best conference. No, I just thought that was kind of interesting. Look at look at the top ten. They got one of the top ten. Am I missing something? 
I do, but you got Ohio State. You know, has, I'm sorry, is that Big Ten's got three in the top eight? Yeah, I was talking about like from top to bottom and top 25s. Yeah, well, hey, this is the SEC argument. Well, at the top, it's the best because <laughs> it means more and all that other bullshit. But Vanderbilt, and, you know, <laughs> Kentucky and Missouri and all that other stuff, uh, and South Carolina, they just wait a second. They just hey. scored again against Tennessee. And hey. Hey, South Carolina is the top 10 killer, man. They're good. So, 19. what I'm saying is, though, you go ahead, you slice and dice it however you want to, but be being in sales for 18 plus years, you're not going to beat me, Chris. You're not going to beat me, Trey. So, you go <laughs> like, oh, look at the top 25 and all that other bullshit. Motherfucker, look at the top eight. You know? Hey, technically, don't we have more SEC? Don't we have more than the SEC in the top eight? No, we have, there's, there's three and three, right? So, you got Tennessee, yes. Alabama. And Georgia, and you got I think Michigan, we got six in top twenty-five. And pretty good. Yeah, once you get out of the top ten, okay. you're just padding stats. Yeah. There you go. Hey, say, even it doesn't mean as much. Hey, take a little dig. I take a little dig there. We loud and clear. It doesn't mean as much, Trey, and outside of the top ten. I will. I quick other. What are, what are your other thoughts? I mean, so expand and play off. I like the idea of that. What are your thoughts about that, Chris? Money. I mean, uh, yeah. <laughs> the LeBron James, the, the great LeBron James quoted uh, when he won in Miami, it's about damn time, right? I think we talked about this earlier in the season, but uh, it's it's the matchups that you can create with more teams, the 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 impact of the buys and the, the locations. You guys already talk, touched on it, but again, what do you what can you do with like a top uh, with the top twelve or so teams and how you can shake them up and mix them around and see how they play. And again, any given Saturday, you can see Tennessee beat uh, beat Bama, and then also get slayed by South Carolina. So look for that magic. But in first, the but first they got slayed by Georgia. And here's uh, the argument I have. And I worked with a guy at Tennessee, actually a pretty good guy, right? Because a lot of them, a hey, lot give of the a ball other, a hug. Give him a hug. Yeah. Give him a hug out there. He's a pre- he's actually a pretty good dude. But everybody else I work with Tennessee is kind of a bit capital D bag, if you know what I mean. And they're just like, but his argument for everything is like. Oh, yeah, TCU, who'd they play? I'm like, let's look straight at the record. They're pretty good. Well, yeah, yeah, but they're not in the SEC. USC, who'd they play? I'm like, motherfucker, I get it, dude. But there is football played played outside the South. You can't <laughs> give me the, you know, it's SEC and everybody else is complete garbage. Because last time I checked, uh-huh. Vanderbilt, okay, Florida not having a great year, okay, uh-huh. Kentucky, Mizzou, all this other garbage. Well, everybody has their teams at the bottom. I thought it meant more, motherfucker. I thought it meant more, but I guess it doesn't, <laughs> okay? Yeah. So – what I'm saying is, dude, there's good teams and there's good players everywhere. Whether you want to admit that or not, I will give you this much. There's a higher concentration in the SEC. I'll give you that much. But then if you're that damn good and, like, who are they playing and everything? I don't know. Do you think USC would come into South Carolina and win? Do you know? Hey, here's a here's a fun little fact. You know there's two USC and one's a Trojan and one's a cock? Little, little food for thought on that, right? But what yeah. I'm saying is, then don't go and lay an egg against a four-loss South Carolina team. Okay? Yeah. yeah. And he's like, well, year, but every year, yep. Tennessee has to play Georgia and Alabama. I'm like, okay, then win every other game. Would you be happy with that? You know? Well, Florida's good sometimes. Okay, well, then, you know, win two out of those, you know, win one of those three games. Otherwise, dude, you're not that good anyways. I just don't want to hear it, you know? Hey, hey, uh, a little tangy here. You don't want any update on the uh, NFL game, do you, Scott? You got DVR? I don't. But wh- what I w- what I was going to talk about, I was going to do a couple thoughts on a couple other college football things, and then we'll go ahead and wrap it up here. We'll wrap yeah. up the brutal truth, right? The brutal truth is I don't think Ohio State is actually going to make the playoffs. That being said, go use. A couple there other you notes. Go. Former Ohio State offensive coordinator Tom Herman, he's taking there over at AU. Okay. Nice. Uh, Michigan running back Corum had knee surgery out for the year. Um, I don't want to get into the story, but John Kitna's son at Florida. Yes, that's that's, that's <laughs> pretty horrific. But um, ex-quarterback, Michigan quarterback, Cade McNamara, who was a quarterback last year when the playoffs, he's going to Iowa. So a couple other interesting notes. You know, any other thoughts on that there, Trey or Chris? How about uh, just because Chris. Freeze. Yeah, how about Hugh Freeze, man? Dude, Luke, if there isn't a perfect fit for Auburn, and I do not mean that as a compliment, I mean the exact Aubrey opposite in. compliment. You talk about win at any – Just uh, win, baby. You got Scam Newton pay for play the Auburn way, man. I mean, mm-hmm. you take it back to the Scam Newton days, they're just like, hey, look, 
you know, I'm a Browns fan and I'm not that wild and crazy about Deshaun and Deshaun Watson, but dude, Auburn is even, even more to the whole, doesn't matter. What did you do on the field? Oh, Hey, well, one day you're telling me about your Bible verses. The next day you're calling up the escort. So which one is it, Hugh? You know? So which one is it? You know, cause I'm, I'm thinking you're more the escort guy than the Bible verse guy. Oh, Hey, he's been, uh, Everybody deserves a second chance. Well, he deserves a second chance because he's actually a pretty damn good coach. Because if he wasn't a pretty damn good coach, he's not going to get a second chance. Am I wrong? Go ahead and tell me I'm wrong because I'm not wrong. Yeah. Um, so second I, chances are four. Here's here's a question I had because they were flirting with uh, Lane Kiffin. Who do you think would have been a better hire? Because a lot of people were comparing him. Hugh Freeze or uh, Lane Kiffin? I don't know, man. I mean, look, honestly – both their personalities fit Auburn. <laughs> and I just not mean that in, and as a compliment in any way, shape, or form. Auburn, the would them, uh, they would do anything it takes, including, yeah, and he was what, wasn't he paying players at Ole Miss, which is also, of course, what Jeremy exactly. Pruitt was doing at Tennessee, not as successfully, right? But um, he was, he was I, handing I them out the Chick fil A bags, not, 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 uh, not Mickey D bags, but Chick fil A came out. And I think that uh, your boy Jimbo. Right. It wasn't it um wasn't it Lane who said that uh Texas AM is over the salary cap. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. It is. Of course, how'd that play out this year? Ha ha ha. So Five and seven, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I think they were both pretty good fits. You know, I mean you have any thoughts on that, Chris? Oh, and the whole Hugh Freeze fire personality. Hugh Freeze wise, or Lane? I don't care. Oh, Lane, I don't care for either either of them. Lane's kind of a – he kind of reminds me of a frat boy. Nothing against uh, fraternities, but uh, yeah. he reminds me of a, a guy still in college, frat, frat guy. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't care for either of them. I'm sure they can coach and all that good stuff, but not a good fit for uh, a team I'd follow. What are your thoughts hey, about Luke Fickle going to Wisconsin? Yeah, that's my next one. Uh, I couldn't be happier for Luke personally. Uh, he just seems like a real good guy. Um, the programs he's jumped to and made his impact on. So uh, for Cincinnati, they're, they're used to the, the springboard effect, right? They've seen some good coaches and developed them and they've seen them walk away. Right. So uh, Brian Kelly, Luke Fickle, um, who else? Uh, D'Antonio, uh, he got his start yep. at UC as a head coach and jumped to Michigan state. So uh, I think Butch man, yeah. Butch who went on to uh, Tennessee, Mr. There you uh, go. Life champions. Right. Five star hearts. <laughs> That's right. So trash, uh, trash cans. Personality wise and all that stuff, I think Luke's going to be a great fit. And then uh, again, gets him in the Big Ten, gets him on the big stage. And again, personality wise, he's a good fit, defensive minded coach for uh, Wisconsin. Wisco whiskey. So whiskey. Uh, yeah, do I, you I, think they have a, a simple formula: recruit Deep big O linemen in state and uh, play good defense and get you a stud running back. So. Let's let's just go down the rabbit hole of demise of the rabbit hole. <laughs> I neither one of us want to go down, but do you think someday if Ryan Day's not cutting it, they don't Ohio State doesn't try to bring Luke the goal as their next head coach? Dude, yes, I sir. guarantee they got his number. They I right. guarantee they're they're gonna slide in those DMs one night if uh, Ryan Day isn't cutting it. And again, if the Ohio State's athletic director has enough uh Viva Tequila. You never know. But, I mean, this is a great audition for him. This is a great shot for him to, again, you're on the big stage of the Big Ten, Big Ten West, so there's not a lot of pressure, right? You get to play Cade McNamara and the Iowa Hawkeyes, and you get to play uh, Suey, Brett Bielema. But, again, this is your chance to bring Wisconsin back to the top of the Big Ten West. He can do it. Just give he, it's it's a booster shot in the arm for them. I'm happy for him. What do you think, Scotty? Trey? Hey, man, I'm all happy for him as long as he doesn't come in a beat Ohio State. You yeah, know? I was about to say, do you guys fear him at all? Not yet. Okay. That was a good hire, though. It kind of came out of left field. Did anybody see that coming? It was like Wisconsin? Wow. Yeah. Well, here's uh, why I think it here's why I think it came in, because I think for what he does, I think he's a good fit for them. And the other thing is his D coordinator, Marcus Freeman, went on to Notre Dame to be a D coordinator, and then he saw him have success at a bigger program. And I don't know, man. There was the rumors that maybe Luke would have took, take the, taken the Notre Dame job last last year, yep. and then he didn't. So 
I think he was like, okay, I think it's a good time to go ahead and bump up to a bigger program, you know? So I think he's, he'd rather be somewhere in the Midwest, you know? And I mean, he's already in the Midwest, but what I'm saying is even when Cincinnati joins the big 12, you know, the, the, the rotting carcass of the big 12, I think he'd rather be the big 10. Agreed. Completely agree. I think uh, it just fits him. It suits him. For a second, he had me fooled. I thought if he turned down Notre Dame to uh, to coach the Bearcats and then stick around with them, I thought, eh, all right, high character kind of move. And I thought he was mainly, A, going to stick around with uh, Cincinnati so he can get a little bit more money, dominate the Big 12 a little bit more. But turned out this was just a – it was a waiting game until the right Big Ten opportunity came up. So, yeah, good for him. Well, gentlemen, any other thoughts? Or if not, we'll go ahead and wrap it up. Yeah, real quick. Um, prediction uh, on the other podcast, I'll drop it on here. I got dogs 31 to 10 because Jaden Daniels was in a walking boot, quarterback for LSU. And uh, he's got to be really mobile and sling around the yard to beat that Georgia defense. I got Georgia winning 31 10 in the SEC even championship. If, even if you, I think Georgia will win, I'm not going to give you a prediction on the score, but I think Georgia will win. But even if they did lose, you're still in the playoff. We'll, we'll play Michigan for you. Hey, Wait, I here's the you can do what we did. Please and thank you. Wait, here's the here's the thing though. Let let's just throw that in. Let's say we lose a close one, like a field goal. Michigan smokes Purdue. Let's say um, USC loses. Do you guys can you? And let's say TCU guys, would you guys actually jump to the third, not to play Michigan because Michigan move ahead of us? So they're gonna say, well, we thought the only one they the only. They'll give you some bullshit reason for it, but there's an expression that uh, my, my father has a whole story about it because he heard it from somebody else um, way back when he was uh, thought he was going to Vietnam and, and, and in basic training. But I digress. The expression is you can't bullshit a bullshitter. OK, mm -hmm. and so what I'm saying is they'll give you some bullshit reason of, well, we thought that so and so was good enough in Ohio State or Los Michigan. I would be shocked if Ohio State of Michigan played in the semifinal. Shocked. OK, if that ever happens, it's going to be one of those SEC, ACC matchups like that might happen. Like let's if they get back to respectability, Florida, Florida State, maybe you'll see that in a semifinal. But you've never seen the SEC. You know, you've seen two teams from the SEC get in, but you've never seen them play in the semifinal because their whole thing is, oh, well, we don't want to get, quote unquote, guarantee the SEC is a spot of championship game. Me, on the other hand. I'd rather have them have one fucking spot instead of seeing a, a two <laughs> in the national yeah. title game. So how about they'll, they'll, if um, they'll do some screws so they don't play other semifinal? How about somehow if like Purdue jumped on Michigan without quorum because I mean that was a bad loss. Like how about if Purdue like upset them? What would happen with them? Dr drop down to three. They'll shift it around. They'll shift it around. Yeah. But I don't see if USC loses man and they lose to the same team twice because that's what, USC's only loss was to Utah. If they lose. They lose the same team twice. I think they're out. On the road. It jumps in. And, no, I don't think Alabama has a fucking argument, man, because – Please everybody don't. Said, everybody says, well, I know you don't want to have anything to do with them. And you say that right now until you go and you you lose to another team. And I know you're like, oh, that'll never happen. Well, it never happens until it does, okay? But what, what I'm getting at is, look, man, Alabama, they said, hey, they had, what, a one-point loss and a three-point loss or whatever the fuck it was. Point but it's is two, though. two losses. But but it was two losses. Mm -hmm. And here's the other thing. Alabama doesn't look like the Alabama we've seen of years past. I'm not saying they're not a good team, but I'm also saying you almost <laughs> lost to a Texas team that has four losses or five losses or how many losses Texas has now when Quinn Hughes wasn't playing. And you almost lost to another shitty Texas A&M team. And don't tell me, well, Texas A&M just beat LSU. They got four wins, or was it five wins on the season, and they lost to App State. Yeah, so don't exactly. tell me it fucking means more. Because let me tell you who also is a huge disappointing failure is Jimbo Fisher. So I'll fucking yeah. take Ryan Day only losing one game and not meeting expectations as compared to the huge disappointing failure that uh, Jimbo Fisher has been at Texas A&M this fucking Amen. year. Amen. How's, how's it doing to hold those five stars? Huh? Are they I'm running the for program the or are you running the program, Jimbo? I'm waiting for the transfer portal, man. Maybe dogs will get something. That's what I'm hoping. Come on down. Come on now. Only if they're elite, Trey. They're you're a leader or you're not. Yep. We'll take an elite DB if they got one. There you go. 
Well, gentlemen, I think yeah. uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. That has been another episode of the Brutal Truth Buckeye Podcast. If Make sure to rate and subscribe, comment, yeah, share that, share like it. and subscribe. And uh, let's get it. Well, hopefully, we'll talk to you come playoff time. All right, boys. All right, yeah. All right, boys. See you, fellas. Doing? I.O. See you.